Hello and welcome back to Energy Connect Studios from the heart of the World Utilities Congress 2024 in Abu Dhabi. I am Noura Tigani and with us here today is Khalid Al Marzouqi, CEO of Tabrid. Khalid, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. My first question is on the role of uh, district cooling as opposed to traditional uh, cooling. How does it benefit uh, businesses and how does it push forward the sustainability agenda? That's a very good question. Uh, I think one of the main areas where district cooling comes in into play for improving a dis uh, or upgrading a business, especially when it comes to large scale developments, if we take, um, let's say, downtown Dubai as an example, or Saadiyat Island, uh, district cooling entails a centralized plant. So when you, once you have a centralized plant, you unlock a, a very expensive real estate for the developers to do or carry out further development in that, uh, in that uh, real estate that's already been freed up. The fact that the district cooling is centralized in a large plant aside, or let's say put aside on the development, it actually uh, gives uh, the designers or the uh, architects the freedom to design the buildings as they wish. You can have a very pointy building, like you have uh, Burj Khalifa. Uh, you can unlock a very expensive real estate, which are the penthouses. Uh, in the traditional form, usually you got those large, noisy air conditioning units on top of those buildings. So, so that's one. You got real estate, you got the design. And a third element, which uh, has been discovered, is those heat islands. So these buildings, or let's say the walkways and the streets, around these buildings have no heat effect coming from these air conditioning units. At the end of the day, you have to understand they actually spew off, spew off a lot of heat. And taking that heat away from, from, from uh, those buildings uh, makes, uh, let's say, the street life much more livable within these buildings. And we notice this in Masdar City. Masdar City is just cool. And if you walk around the buildings in Masdar City, the temperatures, I mean, compared to, let's say, the standard buildings, around four to five degrees lesser, just because of these heat islands are taken away from them. Fourth, of course, there's the usage of the sewage water. Let's say if, a, if the development has a treatment, uh, sewage water treatment plant, that water is, will be put at a much better use using them in the cooling towers of district cooling. So literally recycle that water is even further. So you can see the, the, the business potential and the benefits you get there, the environmental uh, benefits on this one. On top, of course, the issue of the sustainability where it comes because literally all this the cooling for a development will consume half of the energy, which is a big ticket item in any development. Uh, that, that's a big chunk of, let's say, of, of electricity required. Sometimes developments are um, crippled by the fact that they don't have enough power if, if was to be calculated in a traditional manner. Having a district cooling would be the answer uh, for, for, uh, for the power shortage, let's say, in a large development. And as uh, clean energy and renewable energy uh, at large becomes more uh, popular and uh, ha have a higher adoption rate in the region, how is Tavrid using that and integrating that within its uh, district cooling systems? Uh, well, that's a double win. Now, we were lucky in, uh, that we were able to carbon credit our business, although we're not generation, but the mere fact that our solution is... 50% more efficient than the second regular air con conditioning or air cool has actually uh, given us the, the ability to, to generate carbon credit. Now, if you couple that with sustainable power that's coming, let's say, from solar, wind, geothermal, you get a 100% sustainable cooling with uh, renewable sustainable cooling and the carbon credit that goes with it. How important is sustainable cooling for the UAE's uh, net zero goals? Um, I guess I would, uh, if you look at cooling in particular, it uh, takes about 70% of uh, the total grid or the power generated. So if you have a solution, which I call it a very low hanging fruit solution that uh, saves half of that energy, it goes without saying that this is, I think this is the lowest hanging fruit that you have to linger on in order in, in order to to achieve or let's say a major contribution to the towards the net zero uh, uh, goal uh, taking into consideration the cooling here is not a commodity it's a necessity of life it's just like water and electricity cooling go, go, goes hand in hand and um, I, I am a big supporter of, of the fact that this uh, cooling is is a biggest player 
in, in the tour sustainability. And this is, I think, uh, we, from COP28, when we had this discussion with UNEP and the Cool Coalition, it was uh, obvious that this cooling demand will increase in the, in the let's say, in these hot climate areas, uh, especially with this high level of urbanization, coupled with the fact, unfortunate fact, of that the temperature rise in the, you know, the global warming as well. So you, you can see that how important it is to address the cooling uh, issue and to address the, uh, uh, the solutions which are the best or the lowest power consuming solution to provide that one. It's like something you cannot run away from. You have to have it, but let's see, let's see what is the alternatives or the solutions you can have, which is the most uh, efficient ones. Of course, you are no stranger to the World Utilities Congress, right? So what is important for you to showcase this year? Um, here for us is to showcase the, what district cooling can provide. I think it's very clear that a lot of people and from, from the interactions we had with, with, the, with the decision makers that, okay, it is the best option is district cooling would be for the time being with the technology available. Uh, it is the best one. Uh, augmented by the fact that it will, uh, if the power that generates it is, is sustainable, like geothermal, what we built this, uh, the first region's first geothermal uh, cooling plant, uh, or having it coupled with, with solar. Uh, and the fact is that we, here, we are here to use this platform in order to increase the footprint of district cooling. I mean, at the end of the day, we only have 25% of market penetration here. So I think this is a, a very conservative penetration that at minimum, I mean, at the end of the day, not everything can be this, this so cool. I mean, uh, we should have a penetration, not less than 50%. So literally, I think the message uh, we, we have here to use this platform that we showcase innovations using geothermal. It's proven, the concept is proven. There's a plant that's running, producing 10% of uh, Mazdar City's uh, cooling demand, fully sustainable. Uh, by using geothermal and the fact that we say okay we would like to have a bigger footprint or adoption let's say of district cooling even further to reach at least a 50 percent market penetration thank you khaled for these wonderful insights it's a pleasure to have you pleasure is all mine thank you thank you everyone for watching i will be back soon with more exclusive interviews stay tuned to our website and social media for more until next time goodbye